Tom Royer, our extension entomologist, joins us now. And Tom, it sounds like the insects are also ahead of schedule. They are. I've already gotten reports of aphids in canola this year, which is uh, a little bit early and a little bit troubling because typically our seed treatments hold them back for quite a while, and yet we're seeing some buildup uh, in, in we've, I've gotten reports of some buildup in certain areas of the state. I've also gone out and looked at plots and seen diamondback moths out active at this time of the year pretty early as well. So I'm really encouraging anybody that's producing canola to get out and scout their fields for aphids and diamondback moth. We're here at the Magruder plots near campus. Tell us about your research here and then give us a scouting demonstration here in the week. Okay. There's a lot of producers that add an insecticide when they do a top dress nitrogen application. I've always wondered how effective it is and uh, whether it's cost effective, whether it's actually adding any benefit uh, when they do that. So we have some plots right here where we're going to evaluate uh, that insecticide application by itself in combination with the top dress nitrogen application. We're also just looking at a nitrogen application by itself and then we're going to have some untreated so I can get an idea of is it paying for itself. And so we're going to do this at several locations over the next few years working with uh, uh, David Marburger. So I have that information when a producer asks me if I think it's a good thing or not. I can hopefully give them a, a research-based answer. You'll have some data to analyze. Yes, absolutely. If, if you advise folks to get out and scout mm -hmm. and you have a, just a clear little box here, you can yeah. buy these for about a dollar. Yes. And this yes. is a good tool to use? It is because uh, it, it's about one foot long and we always talk about aphids per foot of row. So the key is to find out how many plants you have in a foot of row and then the scouting procedure is you just count the aphids as you knock them out. So I'll demonstrate. I get down, you put this right up next to the base of the plants, tap the plants. Any aphids that are laying on the plants will fall in. And then you just take a count. And we don't have very many aphids in this plot right here, but you just count the number of aphids you have here. You can divide that by the number of plants you have. Take a few samples and that gives you an idea of what a treatment threshold that we recommend for bird chariot aphid or green bugs. So do these at various spots around your fields? Usually recommend at least going to five, five different spots in the field or ten. It doesn't take very long, uh, but it gives you a good idea of what populations you have throughout the field. Now, in terms of any treatment plan or, or guidance this time of year, what do you recommend? The key is, if you're already putting a top dress application and making a trip across the field, all you are really bearing is the cost of the insecticide versus if you have to make a separate trip where you have to pay for that trip across the field again, it's going to cost more. So that's part of the reason that I want to find out more about this because it really is, for a farmer, cheaper to add something while they're already going across the field versus having to do a separate trip. In terms of diamondback moths, is the scouting procedure the same way? No, the scouting procedure for diamondback moths in canola is that you have to just go out and look for uh, physical damage on the leaves. They're, they're chewing. Um, it's a little more difficult to estimate uh, damage, and we don't really have good thresholds for it, but um, if you're seeing a lot of holes being chewed in the leaves and the plants are still pretty small, uh, that would be a good time because they can build up, they can build up in numbers uh, every three or four weeks uh, to the point where they'll be very difficult to control. Um, it's also a little different to scout canola for aphids because they like to be on the underside of the leaves, so you have to tip those leaves up. This system doesn't work very good for canola like it does for wheat, so you actually have to tip them up and, and count the aphids underneath the leaf. There are some ways to battle these to kind of to kind of fight back between now and harvest. There is, uh, and I just think it's really important. Uh, the first step is to get out and look at your field and see what you have because um, a lot of times people get uh, surprised, and sometimes these populations build up so fast that they become very difficult to control and a lot more expensive to control. So. It's better to be out early looking for things and being 
ready to take take uh, action if you need to. Tom, some great guidance there as we kind of head toward harvest these next couple of months. Best of luck with your research out here and please keep us posted. Thank you. And for a link to the information that Tom mentioned, go to sunup.okstate.edu.